Welcome to the SDA Housing Podcast, brought to you by NDIS Property Australia. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hello, everybody. My name is Min, and I'm your host from Endos Prop Australia. And you're listening to the SDA Housing Podcast, a show that explains, highlights, guides, and brings awareness about all things SDA in this ever changing Endos world. Today, we have a repeat guest speaker, Mr. Paul Grant from Axis Lending. Paul, how are you? Good. Thanks, Min. Nice to be here again. Wow, mate. You've flown over twice now to Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, today's topic is SMSF lending. Now, this is a very complex topic and a very complex transaction. And I guess I'm recording this because it, it helps listeners listen to it again and again and again until they figure out what does it all involve. Because this is very, it's a very complex process, isn't it, Paul? Paul, where, where do you want to start here on this topic? I want you about to feel free to unleash or unload your burden of SMSF lending to, to our listeners so that they can spend time absorbing this. So it saves them saves you time to, re- to repeat, explain all this topic again, but allows our listeners to listen to it, absorb it, listen again, think about it, try and give as much information so that they have less questions to ask you when they come along to the table with you eventually down the track, please. Magic. Wonderful. Thanks, Min. Yes. SMSF NDIS lending came about a year ago, roughly, and in construction stage. Now, the listeners that are aware, an SMSF historically could not do a construction loan under the Act. The lender has formed a relationship with a third party who acts as a conduit between your client and the lender to go to contract with a vendor and a builder on your behalf of your client. They will go on title, they will handle the construction, they also do a contract with your client up front that upon completion the client that takes over ownership of the property and obviously the loan to pay out the third party, they then have themselves an SMSF NDIS property. Okay, so that's a, a three-minute summary. Very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> but let me, let me pull back a little bit, Paul. To begin with, an SMSF cannot go out and borrow money from a bank, correct? Correct. So you can't do that? For a construction loan. Correct. So you need to engage another company to do that for you. That's... And that's because the ATO says, as, as per the CIS Act, we can't allow you to do that to protect your, your interests. That's number one. So you've got to hire, engage someone else to do that. Number two is you have the right balance of funds in superannuation to do an SMSF house and land purchase for NDIS. Paul, what do you feel is the appropriate average or minimum balance in SMSF bank account cash to be able to even talk to us about this topic? Okay. I mean, so yes. Bearing in mind, minimum deposit is 20%, and bearing in mind the construction stage and possible vacancy period upon completion of the property. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You also have to mention the additional premium to be added to the package to cover the costs incurred by the third party. Correct. So, yeah. Roughly, your client is going to need, depending on the purchase price, I would suggest 350000 as a minimum. You probably can get away with a bit less. Definitely not under 300. And the reason why, because as well as the purchase price and the 20% deposit, there are bridging costs associated with the transaction. You are having to pay the third party who is doing the bridging for you a fee for their service, their costs for doing the transaction. You could be looking at forty dollars or $50,000. You're also prepaying 12 months interest. Again, similar type numbers. So you know, $80,000, $90,000, $100,000 over and above the purchase price, over and above your 20% deposit is where you're probably getting that $350,000 mark as a, a safety guide. So let's just, we'll get to that in a minute. So what Paul is saying here is if I was a third-party person and a client came to me saying, hey, but uh, I need some help. I, need, I can't do this on my own. Can you do this for me? I, as a third-party, would say to you, well, are you asking me to borrow money from my bank to buy the block for you? To build a house for you, incur stamp duty, interest costs, solicitor fees, 
um, um, land tax, uh, whatever costs may be at my cost, which I want to pass on to you. So, Paul, I guess where I'm going with this is a lot of times investors always say, oh, sorry, SMS, F investors always say, why is there 150 grand uplift here? Well, that's the reason why, isn't it, Paul? Yeah. So to engage a third party to do this for you, it costs them a lot of money and they're merely passing that back on to you as the end buyer, being your SMSF. So before we go to a case study scenario, Paul, what else should our SMSF listeners be aware of before they begin this journey? First thing is they've got to have an SMSF in place, okay? You can be someone with a private policy. You've got to convert that, or if not all of it, enough of it into an SMSF to get this transaction rolling. So you have to have that established already. That's the key to be able to move forward. Uh, The loan application is not dissimilar to doing a normal NDIS loan application, as we spoke about on a previous podcast. It is a six to eight week process. But the, the key factor to be able to move forward is SMSF established, available funds sitting in the cash management account of the SMSF to be able to pay your deposit and cost that settlement. And that's that land settlement. Gotcha. Has your organisation, Access Lending, done many of these SMSF deals? Yes, it is a growing market, I Min, mean, with a lot of investors historically who, due to interest rates and other economic factors, can't buy investment properties or an NDIS investment property outside of super because they're already heavily geared, etc. Inside of super, they've got this cash sitting here that's they're looking for an alternative means of making the return. These are limited recourse loans, so the client's personal loan history does not come into it. These are standalone agreements. We still need to see income. We need to see they're contributing to a fund to allow for possible vacancies later on but these are self-servicing loans. So the income meaning the SGC of their salary going to super plus the rent from the property to show the internal serviceability of the SMSF lending range. Gotcha. A question I'm sure investors will ask you, and I've asked this question to you this morning and you've already answered it to me, which is great. So I know how to answer this question, ask this question to you now. Devil's advocate, okay? We have two houses side by side. One's 900 grand, one's $1,050,000. 150 grand difference sure, to the to the buyer. Surely there's going to be a valuation issue in this matter when there's two houses side by side identical, but one is SMSF, one is normal. Correct or not? Are they both NDIS? Or yes. They're yes. Both in, no, it, it, it's going awkward question because it all... Well, uh, well let, let me jump. I'll give the answer. <laughs> you told me earlier, which is the uh, most of the additional cost is a cost payable by the SMSF to the third party, not part of the contract. Yes, so the, the borrowing costs and the interest charges are separate. Uh, over and above the purchase price for an SMSF, whereas on a normal transaction, the client pays them themselves up front. Yeah, so there's no, uh, there's no shortfall under 50 grand because those costs are not part of the contract. No, no. Yeah. They're both worth 900. The other one's just got the built in costs added to it, yes. Other than that, it's pretty much a standard SDA home loan. Pretty much, isn't it? Yes, and then the, the key factors are obviously contributing to the fund is important, uh, making sure your funds have got enough in it to allow for vacancy once it's finished. You may not get a tenant day one. And obviously, you'll, you'll do your due diligence with your accountant. If this is the right way for you to go. Uh, you will need to prepare a bear trust because the bear trust is the custodian of the property. If you have five SMSF NDIS properties, you need five bear trusts because a bear trust is property specific. Your clients' accountants or financial advisors will be able to help them with that. And obviously, there will be a contract between the client and the third party regarding the on-sale. That contract is given to the client for them to peruse and their accountant, lawyer, etc., as, as they seem fit to make sure it's right for them. Paul, the, I want to highlight to our listeners the difference, difference between this transaction and SMS lending to the other podcast we did recently about normal lending is two things that stand out. Number one is this third party is a proxy for your SMSF, correct? Number one. Number two, it's a deposit of 30% and that's it. No draw, no interest payments, no drawdown payments at all during the process, correct? 20% plus costs correct. and those costs are inclusive of 12 months prepaid interest. Yes. So around about around about 30. Yeah. So if you are a normal mum and dad buyer, buying an this property, you're paying interest payments on the construction loan the drawdown payments of the build costs, and that's an ongoing cost every month there. Whereas in this scenario, being the SMSF, most of it, all of it's prepaid in advance as a big lump sum, 
to the third party proxy who handles everything on your behalf. And once it's complete and finalized, then there'll be a um, a settlement, isn't there, Paul? Settlement, yeah. transfer of title, payout of that third party, and then you'll take over that loan as a normal investment house loan with normal monthly repayments. Paul, I want to hand you back a document of this case study here, uh, which you have there. Do you want to run through these numbers to show where the price was, numbers were as a two-part contract, and then all the additional costs, add, 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 plus, 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 to make it the final pricing and what the the cost of deposit payable to that third party is at the very start and at the very end. So you want me to do the exact numbers? Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? Right, so this is a package in WA. Land price, 430000 Build price, 582000 I would presume that is a three bed, which is a two participant plus carer, high physical support. Whatever the numbers are, just, just, we're still with numbers. That's a total $1,012,000. Yeah. Interest charges for 12 months, are estimated to be 44600 And that's based upon an 8.24% rate plus buffer? Correct. Which is assuming a 12-month build time frame there. Yes, the NDIS rate's 7.49, but they, they put a, a higher rate in there to allow for RBA increases. And they've also got to allow for you know, the time it takes to construct if there's any delays in that. Their costs, holding costs, admin costs, etc. There's another almost 50000 so those total costs over and above the purchase price, ninety four thousand four hundred. Total package price, purchase price plus costs, one million one hundred six thousand. So there's the one million and twelve initially plus those costs. Total the client's going to pay one million one hundred six. Twenty percent deposit, two hundred two thousand four hundred. Question: That twenty percent deposit is based off the new price or the old? That's based on the initial house and land package price of one point oh one two million. Correct. That's correct, because the other costs are not part of the value. So we basically quarantine that 94 separately on the side. Okay, gotcha. You can't borrow against that. It's not part of the, the lending ratio. Mm-hmm. 202000 deposit plus your 94000 cost to get in. That at land settlement, you will pay $296,800-odd to the proxy. To the charity yeah. who settles the block of land. Twelve, nothing more to be paid. 12 months later, 11 months, 10 months, depending on the build time, it's time to settle. It's time to take over. You will pay stamp duty on a new house. Stamp duty on this property worth one million and twelve thousand is thirty-eight thousand seven hundred. Your borrowing costs roughly five thousand. We can go into more detail later. So there's forty-three thousand seven hundred that you're adding to the two hundred ninety-six thousand eight hundred you've already paid. So total payment three hundred forty thousand five hundred odd dollars. Majority up front. Stamp duty and borrowing fees at the back end. So basically, three forty thousand is the total outlay from this SMSF on the original purchase price of one point oh one two million thirty four thirty five percent. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. It's an outlay of well, two outlays: the big outlay at the very start, and then the small outlay at the very end, which is the basically the um the um stamp duty. It's about thirty four thirty five percent total. Yeah. Okay. So there you are on a million purchase. It's thirty five percent there, three fifty thousand, three forty thousand down. Down. If you're going at a lower price, being eight fifty, there'll be pro rider down there. But again, Paul, your organisation does the quote for this, doesn't it? Correct. And- I can supply this quote to the clients. We do every time, as long as we know a house and land price. This this quote can be documented and given to your clients to make sure they're they're happy with what they're doing and want to proceed. Gotcha. Now, the process of an SMSF loan process is more mm, longer. Do you want to explain the, the, the t- break down the time frame? Process? Yes, it is why, a bit wiser so longer. It's a bit more complicated because we've got a third party also involved in the transaction. Might I add two layers, if not three layers of lawyers here too, by the way? Yes. The vendors, lawyers, third parties, lawyers, and the client's lawyer need to peruse documents. So the, 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 the order, the process of how it will work is your client would come to me to see if they qualify for an SMSF loan. The key point is funds in the bank. If they've got $200,000 in an SMSF, they're not going to go anywhere very quickly. So anything over that 350 mark, borrowing capacity is not a problem because these things self-service. What happens next? Client will go away with the help of a, their referrer, their, their partner they're working with, and come back to me with a house and land package via an expression of interest. I need to get that client's loan conditionally approved so that your client knows that the lender that we choose and use is going to support them. 
that conditional approval is given to the third party. The third party signs the expression of interest because that's the document used by the vendor and the builder to go to contract. And their contract is with the third party. It's not with your client at this stage. So that's where a little bit of time is taken, several weeks, a couple of weeks to get client's information in, to get those details off to the lender, to get the conditional approval back that off to the charities for them to sign the expression of interest to then satisfy the vendor and the builder that it's all proceeding. After that's done, so the contracts are prepared, the charity, uh, third party charity they are, they sign contracts, they get their finance in order, proceed to settle on land and build. Your client and I then sit tight, client pays their deposit and fees at land settlement after they've perused the contract third party prepares it gives to them for the on sale but they're all happy with that obviously they continue if they're not happy the client's accountant and or lawyer and the third party's lawyer can have some conversations about clauses if need be for clarification once all sorted deal is done settlement happens your client sits back as i do and we wait to be notified when the property is approaching completion we then get back together formalise their loan application, update some documents from what we initially took 10 months ago prior, put the application through, knowing it's going to be approved because it was already conditionally approved, to prepare to settle with the third party to take them out, pay out their finance, take possession of the house and get some tenants in. Now, Paul, in relation to our previous podcast where you spent some time talking about serviceability, vacancy and everything else, I just want to go back to this little case scenario here that you just mentioned, TM, the the $1.012 million purchase the $340,000 outlay for deposit and settlement costs. Now, I would recommend our listeners, if you're an SMS investor buyer, have buffer in your SMSF bank account because, as Paul mentioned earlier, there's going to be some vacancy period. Vacancy requires payments of the loan if it's empty. So have that assumption there, number one. Number two, there could be a requirement for partial or full furniture packages in your property. Potentially, 15 to 25 grand there. In addition, there'll also be costs for procurement of participants and engagement of provider. Paul, you agree? So all up there, we're talking 25,000, 20,000 interest costs there. It would be, it would be an eye, wouldn't it? it be, yeah. So we're talking 60 grand, 70 grand there, right? So right there, 340 grand is the payment, but your balance in super should be at least 400 grand plus in this scenario here to make sure you cover all those costs in the future. Now, obviously, if you're in high income, you're getting your not your 10% SGC contributions going from your employer, great. Uh, if you have extra cash, you, you make contributions as an undeducted contribution to super, great. The point being is you need to have money in your SMSF fund post-settlement to cover these additional costs um, because, yeah, there's more costs than just the construction costs. Completion costs and post settlement costs as well. Just want to add my two bits there, uh, two cents worth there, Paul. Very important, Min, and I like to explain exactly what this is going to cost the clients so that they know that there's no waking up in a year's time, oh, we're short. We, we, we allow for this and we educate the clients that this is what it's going to be now. It's what's going to be needed in the future. Are you happy and comfortable with what you're doing that you've got this covered? Paul, any more words of advice, pearls of wisdom, forecast predictions, whatever you want to call it, you want to uh, outlay to the the listeners now before we hang up? Look, do your research. Again, location, where you buy, what is the demand, your providers and referral partner you're working with, they should better give you statistics on this. How much debt do you want to have? Financial advice from your accountant. And yeah. Bear in mind, I have two accountants. I have one accountant that does my personal stuff and one that does my SMSF. Everybody's experts at different things, so make sure you, you seek the right advice. And you, you obviously ask the questions to get the answers that you need to, to make sure you're doing making an informed decision because it is your future that you're looking at. I have a question for you, Paul. This is more of an age, um, age bracket uh, pension phase investors versus you know pre-retirement age. Is there an age limit? If a person had enough money in their superannuation, like half a million in the bank in super, but they were 59 years old, would the lender take their age into consideration given the fact that their working life is limited? You know what I mean? The technical answer, I mean, is there's no age discrimination. 
plant must be working. They must be contributing to super. If all things go pear-shaped one day, the property is sold and you presume the debt is repaid. There's, there's no desire or want to chase a client personally for any outstanding SMSF debt. So age limit, is the answer is no. Contributing to super is yes. And having sufficient funds in your super for a rainy day to handle vacancy periods and one-offs that may happen is, is the key. If you are in pension phase, you, you can't do it. Uh, if you've got the cash to buy one, go ahead. You can't borrow if you're in pension phase because you're not contributing to your super anymore. That is the, the lender's policy. Whether it, It's the lender's policy. Gotcha. And also, lastly, look, with these kind of complex transactions and third-party third party lawyers, your lawyer, lenders, lawyers, a lot of in-between red tape here, expect delays, ex- expect challenges to get the ball rolling because it ain't going to settle quickly. Correct, Paul? Correct. And the more, the more the accountants, financial advisors and lawyers understand what we're dealing with here, with NIS, construction, third-party bridging finance, the better it is. And unfortunately, people don't always like clauses in contracts and they're put there for a reason. But you know, open and frank discussion is had early to, to nail out any queries that are had regarding those contracts. But that, that tends to be where the delay is, is, is obviously lawyers exchanging contracts and putting in clauses and taking out clauses. Yeah, gotcha. I understand. Well, mate, thank you so much for your time, Paul. Really appreciate you helping us uh, explain to our, our listeners more about the intricacies of SMSF lending when it comes to SDA property. And hopefully in the coming few months, we can do a, a live webinar just to present to our listeners on a live webinar more of a calculation breakdown, like what we covered today as an example, but more of a visual um, presentation on a Zoom call. How's that sample? Well, Goodman, nice to be here. And I would certainly... Welcome the opportunity to help your listeners wherever I can. Done. Thank you so much, mate. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you are subscribed and following us so you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this podcast with those that could benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.